Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Sydney from PhoneDuck.com and I have here the Huawei Impulse 4G from AT&T. This is a budget-friendly mid-range Android smartphone. It has an 800 megahertz processor, a 5 megapixel camera, 3.8 inch display, and it's only $30 but it's also a 4G device. It supports AT&T's HSPA Plus network. So um, kind of an interesting device here. Some of the features that used to be saved for high-end devices we're now seeing on a low-end phone. So I'm going to do an unboxing. It's not a full review, just a chance for us to get some first impressions, you know, take a quick first look at it. And then I'll come back with a full review in a couple of days. Before we get on to the unboxing, I had to say especially to our friends at Best Buy Mobile, we thank them all the time because they send us free phones that we can add to our one pod Banda game, which is the game where you guys can win free phones. One of the great things about Best Buy Mobile is that they sell phones from every major US carrier, including some prepaid carriers. So when you're shopping around and trying to decide which phone to get, instead of going to several different retailers, you can just go to Best Buy Mobile and they're all there to compare side by side. So thank you Best Buy Mobile for being so awesome. Thank you guys for watching this video. It's an unboxing of the Impulse 4G from AT&T. I'm Sydney from PhoneDog.com. Let's go check it out. So here we go with the Huawei Impulse 4G. Uh, you know, up until now, 4G phones really just the, the super phones, the high-end phones that would cost, you know, two, three hundred dollars on contracts. So it'd be interesting, you know, to test out a budget smartphone that's, you know, being advertised as a 4G phone, however you want to take that with AT&T's 4G network. Um, but it is, you know, being advertised as a 4G phone. So, you know, one of the interesting things that you'll notice about the device is that there is no mention of Huawei anywhere on the phone. There's no branding at all, so I thought that was kind of funny. Um, but you do have the AT&T logo, and uh, then we'll see what else is in the box. I'm pretty sure the battery is in here. Uh, you get your quick start guide. GPS, live sports, modular charger. This thing is huge. Uh, so you can plug in the um, data cable to the charger and uh, use that to charge your phone. And then here is the battery. So we'll put all of the paper back in there and then set that to the side. So the battery is 1500, 1500 milliamp hour battery. So, you know, not bad. Uh, definitely could have been better, especially considering that it's a 4G device. It probably would be nice to have a larger battery, so we'll have to see, uh, you know, how it performs, what battery life is like. SIM card is already in there, so we'll put the battery in and power it on. Is that the power button? Yes, okay. Take that off. Okay, so uh, while it's powering on, just a quick run through of the specs. You have a 3.8 inch WVGA screen, 800 by 480. Uh, powering the device is an 800 megahertz Qualcomm processor. Uh, it ships with Android 2.2. Now I don't have any official word on when it will get 2.3. We have been told that all AT&T devices will get 2.3. Um, but I don't know when it's going to get 2.3, so just a note on that, and I will skip all of this, do that later, so we can just take a look at the device, and automatic. Okay, so uh, yeah, it's stock Android, as you can see, 2.2. So, you know, for those who are kind of new to Android, one of the nice things that, you know, you're starting to see more and more on these devices is they'll give you kind of little shortcuts to uh, kind of figuring out how Android works. Um, looks like we had one there, but, you know, you can see, you go to the launcher to view all of your apps. Uh, so far, the display is actually very smooth, uh, just physically, you know, a lot of how a, a touchscreen performs is not just you know the processor but also the physical screen itself if the screen is kind of sticky or um, you know made out of cheap plastic then no matter what the processor is like it's always going to be you know not a very smooth experience but the physical screen on here it's very smooth and then added to that you can see that the processor handles everything pretty well again you know 800 megahertz so it's a low-end processor so you can expect some lag here and there um, but you know I'll test it out and then I'll see you know if it really is a problem or if this is you know a device that you should look into now in the back we have a 5 megapixel camera, 
Uh, I believe it does have an autofocus and it also has a flash. So that's nice and it captures 720p uh, HD video. So, you know, again, um, you know, talking about how these, you know, um, features that used to be saved for only the super phones, now they're kind of trickling down into the mid-range phone, the low-end devices. So 720p HD video capture, again, I'll test it out and tell you guys what it's like. So let's go to the web browser. Now, of course, this is the stock Android web browser, um, but you can also, you know, download whatever other web browsers you want to. The stock Android web browser isn't the best, but since I don't have any other ones downloaded, we'll see what it's like out of the box. You can see I am getting uh, HSPA Plus right now. I'm in the Dallas area, so let's go to Phone Dog. This screen is, um, it's kind of small, 3.8 inches. Uh, it's definitely you know, a lot of other mid-range devices. They have like a 3.2 inch display or a 3.5 inch display. So it's nice to have a 3.8 inch display. Sorry, that was my phone. Um, but still, it seems a little bit small, you know, for typing. But the nice thing is that you can use a keyboard in landscape mode, so that I make it a lot easier. So Phone Dog has loaded up. That was actually not too bad. So I mentioned earlier, you know, say what you want about. Uh, AT&T's HSPA Plus network, whether it's true 4G or not, um, but you know it seems like the page loaded up pretty quickly. Now it is the highest speeds that you can reach with AT&T's current HSPA Plus network is 14.4 megabits per second. So uh, not quite as fast as LTE, definitely not as fast as T-Mobile's uh, HSPA Plus network, which is currently they're upgrading it to you know 42 megabits per second. So AT&T has a long way to go in the 4G department, but again, it's being advertised as a 4G device. Um, looks like pinch to zoom is also incredibly smooth, considering well, we got a little bit of a choppiness there. So um, of course we have flash content loaded, so you can see the advertisement. So you know obviously if you don't have those that you know those plugins loaded it will probably be a lot smoother but considering that we have them loaded that's not bad there was you know a little bit of choppiness there but really uh, not too terribly bad so kind of impressive you know for being a low-end device on the bottom you have your four android buttons back menu home and search uh, these are kind of a little rearranged compared to other android devices but if this is your first android smartphone um, it shouldn't be too confusing and then you have your volume rocker on the left side. On the right side is nothing, so there is no dedicated camera button. That's a little disappointing, but it's personal preference. I like having one, but not everyone does, or it doesn't bother everyone. Uh, power button, as well as the screen lock and unlock button on the top, as well as the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So. Uh, that is a quick look at the Huawei Impulse 4G. I will be testing the, this out. I'll test out the uh, 4G capabilities. I'll test out, um, do some processor tests, you know, see if the lag is too bad, and, uh, you know, test out battery life and different things like that. And then I'll also do more tests using the, the keyboard. Actually, let me just do a quick test right now. Uh, the quick brown Fox. I'm not as creative as Aaron is, so I always just do <laughs> the default sentence over the lazy dog. So yeah, the keys are a little bit small, you know, just because the display is kind of on the smaller side, but really uh, not too bad. Again, you know, being 3.8 inches, that's just shy of these 4.8 inch displays that we see. And then in landscape mode, it's definitely a lot easier over the lazy dog. So we had just one, well, I had another arrow there, but uh, so far the keyboard um, seems to be doing really well. And then you also have swipe you can use. So yeah, again, I will be testing this out further, tell you more about it in the full review. Check out my first impressions article on phonedog.com. And uh, I may do a test with the 720p HD video capture if you guys want to see that. Um, but I'm Cindy from PhoneDonk.com. You can follow me on Twitter. My screen name is It's My Job to Know. And you can ask me a question about this phone or any other phone that we have currently, and I'll try my best to answer them. Other than that, I will see you guys later when I come back with a full review. Thanks, guys, for watching. Bye.